Well, a new drug could save millions of lives across the developing world. British drug maker GlaxoSmithKline getting a green light from European regulators for the world's first malaria vaccine. That mosquito carry disease kills hundreds of thousands every year in tropical countries. And now there's this. Our Fox News medical A-teamer, Dr. Mark Siegel, has more on the significance of all of this. Doc? Jenna, the world's first malaria vaccine has just been given the green light by the European Medicines Agency, opening the way for widespread use. Malaria, as you know, is an enormous global health problem with close to 200 million cases in 2013 alone, over 500,000 deaths, according to the World Health Organization. 90% of all malaria deaths occur in Africa, with the vast majority being children who die before their fifth birthday. According to Dr. Monsef Slawi, who heads up global vaccine development at GlaxoSmithKline, one child dies of malaria every minute. He reports that the vaccine works 30 to 50 percent of the time. Now, if we could save 100,000 or 200,000 of these children, Slawi says, it is transformational. If I'm a parent and I have four children and I'm told two of them could die of malaria, here is a vaccine, it can save the life of one of them. Will I say, oh no, I don't take it, it's two or nothing, or do I take the one that saves one of the lives? I'll take the one that saves one of the life. The new vaccine is called Muscarix, aptly sounding like a mosquito. It is the first vaccine to ever rev up the immune system to fight a parasite. Side effects are mostly minor, Jenna, including pain at the injection site or fever. Muscarix has been developed for over 30 years at a cost of over $500 million by GSK. It's partly funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The World Health Organization estimates that over 3 billion people are currently at risk in the world for developing malaria. The WHO is working with humanitarian relief organizations on how to best introduce the vaccine. Perhaps one day soon, travelers to Africa who currently rely on malarone and other preventative drugs will be able to take a vaccine instead. Just, Jenna? Just real quick on that, Doc, because you mentioned the Gates Foundation. Do we have any indication of accessibility of this vaccine? Would it be cheap enough to get to enough people to really impact the way that some hope it would? That's a great point. Now, currently, with the Gates Foundation involved, Jenna, it will be able to be getting to people in Africa who really need it the most. The question is, you know, is our own FDA going to get involved? Mm. Is this going to then be for worldwide use? But Africa is the key place to start, and it looks like it's going to be somewhat affordable. I mean, a game changer completely, if that is the case. Let me ask you about another drug that some think is a game changer, and we're waiting for a ruling from the FDA here. We've talked a little bit about cholesterol, this cholesterol drug, and how most people have to rely on statins. And this new drug that the FDA is looking at, some say would give, um, give an alternative therapy to those that are suffering from high cholesterol. What do you know about this? How significant is it? This is a big story, uh, Jenna, also. The FDA, and th that's here in the U.S., the FDA is expected to decide this afternoon about whether to improve the injectable drug. It's called Aliricumab. Aliricumab, it's marketed as Proluent. It's a state-of-the-art targeted antibody which attacks a protein on the surface of the bad cholesterol molecule. A recent study in the New England Journal of Medicine showed that Proluent lowers cholesterol dramatically in patients who are already taking popular statin drugs like Lipitor, Crestor. Not only that, but it also cut down on the number of cardiac events, including heart attacks, strokes, and angina. And, and of course, that is some, you know, that's been the red flags raised from taking some of those drugs Absolutely. about whether or not you're, you're more prone for heart attacks or otherwise. Are there any downsides to this new drug? Do we know of the downsides? Well, one big downside, as you might imagine, Jenna, is it's a shot. It's being marketed as twice a month shot, but studies show that once a month may be as effective. But for some people, any shot is too much to tolerate, whether they're afraid of it, afraid of shots, or there could be physical side effects like pain on the injection site, fever or allergy. But so far, not any big side effects. Well, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a wimp when it comes to shots <laughs> myself, Doc. So I'll have to come to you next time because <laughs> I, I think I'm going in the opposite direction. I was scared as a kid, then you get better, and then all of a sudden I'm back there again. I don't get it. Well, but, you know, if you're a, Jenna, if you're a person that has have had a heart attack or is at risk of a heart well, attack, this may be something that you really have to learn to take. But the expense is, is something I'm concerned about. The expense and the shot, but then you don't have to take the drug every day. So there's, there's, there's pros and cons. So it'll be interesting if the FDA just come out and improve it, and we're waiting to see if they actually do. Doc, some great stories there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jenna.